Hello and uh, welcome to the Daily FX webinar. Today's uh, Tuesday, March the 28th. And today we're going to look at the US Advance Good Trades Balance for February. Uh, hi, my name's Nick Cawley um, and I'll be hosting this webinar. Uh, just to let you know that all views expressed here are my own and do not represent any views or ideas from either my employers, Daily FX, or IG group. I'm just making sure that everything's working here. Uh, that's on, that's on, that's on, that's on. Okay, so we're pretty good to go. Right, okay, yeah. Right, as I said, we're looking at this number here. We're looking at the uh, US advanced good trade balance for February. Um, basically, a trade deficit. Uh, we rank it as importance quite high because it has a bit of a knock on effect, quite a strong knock on effect into GDP. Uh, and obviously once you go into GDP, you're looking at the Fed and it's also at the moment we've got uh, with the Trump, uh, Donald Trump, the US President, uh, Trump's trade policies or trade ideas, um, again the trade balance, the trade deficit is something that he's focusing on quite heavily. Um, what I might do is I might just um, close the room for about five minutes, I'll come back with you in about four or five minutes time, we'll go through uh, the numbers, what we're looking for, um, we'll look at some currency pairs that may have some movement on the back of this figure um, and then we'll take the figure and, and we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to put the mic on, hold, uh, on mute here, so as I said I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, thanks. Right, welcome back. 
Um, for anybody who's just joined us, I'd just like to reiterate that, as I said, my name is Nick Corley. Uh, the views that I'm going to express here today are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any trade advice from either my employer's Daily FX or IG Group. Right, let's look at this one. Uh, right, today we're looking at the advanced uh, goods trade balance for February. Um, as you can see, the previous month, January, we had a, just over a $69 billion deficit. Uh, and this is something that uh, US President Trump is starting to focus on quite sharply. Um, today we're looking for that deficit to, to reduce a bit down to around the $66.6 .6 billion. Um, if we look back to uh, October 2016, uh, the trade deficit we had there was $56 billion. So we've actually, the, the trade deficit's been widening uh, over the last six or seven months, as I said, to 69.2 billion uh, last year. Um, now, the thing with the trade balance, what we have to look at is if, if you take it in relation to GDP, GDP is uh, sort of a combination of consumption, spending, investments, and the difference really between exports and uh, imports. And obviously, the, the larger the deficit, the more it starts to weigh on GDP. Um, the UK, the US economy is running okay at the moment. Um, fourth quarter 2016 GDP is estimated at 1.9%, but that's still sharply lower than uh, the third quarter 2016, which ran at a, a, a very reasonable 3.5%. And a lot of this deceleration, a lot of this pullback in GDP was down to the uh, downturn in exports and a slight acceleration in imports. Weighing on, uh, weighing on GDP there. Now, as I said, Donald Trump, this is one of the things that Donald Trump is looking at, as we, sort of, all of us are probably reasonably well aware. Um, and according to the president, the uh, persistent sort of trade deficit uh, that countries are running, that the US is running, is basically destroying jobs. Um, we had, uh, I think it's the beginning of the year, uh, Peter Navarro, who's the head of the White House uh, National Trade Council, uh, had, a, had a little jibe at Germany saying that, um, that Germany was gaining an unfair advantage over the US and other other trading nations um, via a weak euro. Um, Germany responded that wasn't the case, but that's, uh, I think it's, this is going to be something that's going to be going on. Um, if you look at the four countries that uh, Donald Trump is kind of looking at for this, uh, for the cause of this trade deficit, you're looking at China, which is probably accounts for about two thirds, just under two thirds of the deficit. Then you've obviously got Mexico, uh, Japan, Canada, and and with all. All of these, Trump is, is starting to try to look to renegotiate trade agreements uh, to basically try and make a fairer balance and to effectively bring jobs back into the U.S. Um, so, as I said, it's, it's quite a it's, it's quite an ongoing thing with Donald Trump, um, and so what we're we looking for today, as I said, we're looking for the the, the deficit just to to widen, uh, sorry, to narrow marginally. Um, the general uptick in Europe uh, may start to help the US. Uh, we've had some good um, sentiment releases. We've had some good manufacturing and production data. Uh, and so what we're going to see is if we if we see um, the, the the economy in Europe start to pick up. Uh, the US will obviously hope to sell there further uh, and to narrow this trade balance. Um, and again, with China, I mean, uh, China's um, growth expectations, I think, pared back from about 6.7% to 6.5%, still a reasonably, uh, reasonably solid pace. Um, and also, that with the, uh, the dollar being the way it is at the moment, um, could start to become a little bit cheaper for, into Europe, and as I said, so a stronger European complex, stronger European economies. Uh, hopefully, for, for from the U.S. point of view, you know there'll be more sales there, and we can get this trade balance to to narrow a touch. Um, 
if we have a quick look at the market, so to take this back towards market. What we're going to do, just going to nip over here to the IG trading platform. We're just going to look at um, three currency pairs. Um, well, actually, we'll probably just 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 focus on two currency pairs and the US dollar basket. Uh, first one I've got here, I've got um, the dollar versus the Mexican peso. This is on a daily basis. Uh, and as you can see, uh, where if I actually take it to a weekly basis, you can see where uh, weekly basis there. This is obviously no, no. This is where uh, when Donald Trump was elected president, and it's took about from about 18 and a half, uh, and the Mexican peso went up to about 22, 20, doing a bit against the dollar. But as you can see, in the last, uh, in about the last four or five weeks, or actually a bit more than that, maybe two months, the Mexican peso has, has, has taken all of those losses and, and pared back all of those losses, and we got back to, to pretty much when uh, Donald Trump was elected. So this obviously this spike here was on all the worries about Donald Trump and uh, trade embargoes and trade tariffs. Um, if we look at uh, dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Uh, okay, again, this is on a daily basis. We'll take that back through a weekly basis. We should see the same kind of price action. Uh, yeah, okay, so there we go again. The November, where are we? Uh, da -da 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 -da. No, I can find it. Should be that one. It should be that one about there. So you can see the, the what's happened in the November there. Uh, and again, we sort of you went down here, Canadian dollar went down, but it's just sort of recovered a, a touch, and the dollar's now recovered there. Um, we'll also look at the uh, US dollar basket, uh, DXY, uh, this is on a daily basis. And again, what you can see here is that uh, after Trump came to power, uh, expectations and so there we go again so there is your rise there that was your weekly rise there where Trump came to power and again a lot of it's now being paired back you know the Fed's um, the Fed's put up had a quick quarter percent hike there's talk of obviously another maybe another two the slightly more hawkish talk of three uh, an additional three interest rate hikes has been paired back slightly so the dollars you know, the dollars given back a lot of its gains and so we're actually trading on, on a, let's have a look on a daily basis oh, well on a weekly basis as you can see we're actually trading back to level seen at the beginning of November 2016 so yeah everything's been given back by the dollar um, these are the currencies of the Mexican peso and the Canadian dollar are probably the currencies which will uh, be affected by today's number and the general outlook on the GDP. Um, so what we're going to do is I'll just get onto this page. I'm just going. What we'll do is we're just going to nip over to. Um, we'll take the numbers off uh, writers. As I said, we're looking for uh, a 66.6 .6 billion deficit, um, a narrower deficit. Uh, and you know we should be looking at uh, a slightly better GDP figure, um, deficit reduced, slightly stronger GDP, potential for government spending to rise, pushing uh, pushing forward rate hikes, uh, and and culminating in a stronger US dollar. Obviously, a wider deficit uh, will bring a slowdown in the GDP or a reduction in GDP. The Fed then may take a little bit more time to uh, to hike, uh, and this will then play uh, delay the interest rate cycle, the hike cycle, and cause the dollar to weaken a touch. So right, we're just about to go into the figure. So let's uh, nip across over here. Um, where are we? Okay, we've got 36 seconds. This is the one we're looking at here. So said, yeah, there's 69 there, 69 billion from the last time. We're expecting minus 66.6. .6. Uh, okay, let's just wait for that to go through. Right, any second now. Here we go. Little countdown into it. Right, so we're looking for minus six, uh, minus sixty-nine prior, and what have we got? Right, not quite there yet. Okay. 
okay, sometimes there is a slight delay here. Let me just go to another screen and see if somebody else has said if this is uh, anywhere else. Um, let's have a refresh here. Maybe they got the February report up already up on the. Here we go. So we got that there. So let's just go back in and see where they're not. No, they still haven't got it there. So let's go into this February report here. Let's, let's see if we, can, if we can pull the number out from here somewhere. Okay, so what we've actually got, here we go. So we've got um, a trade deficit of 64.8 billion. Now that's slightly better than expected. As I said, we were looking for a 66.6 .6, um, deficit. So we got that international trade down and it was 68.8 in January. So that's been changed moderately. Okay, let's go on to the uh, trading screens and see what's happening here. Um, okay, on this I want to take it down to a, a one minute. Okay, and as you can see here, the, the dollar's just fractionally gaining here against the Mexican peso. As I said, you know, with a smaller trade deficit, uh, slightly better, we could probably get slightly better than expected GDP, or we won't have the slowdown that some people are expecting in GDP in this quarter. So we've got that there in the Mexican peso. I would imagine the same against the Canadian dollar. So let's just take it to the one minute chart. If you haven't uh, got a good tracking package, I can quite recommend this IG platform. Just go into IG.com. You can download it for free and use it for free. Yeah, so there's, there's not a great deal here. Maybe a slight pickup here on the dollar against the Canadian dollar. Again, as I said, the numbers, it's not a huge market moving number. Uh, today's release anyhow, but yeah, it's a little bit better and it should just underpin uh, GDP expectations. Look at the dollar basket. That's a weekly one, that's a little bit too far out. Go down to one minute. And yeah, so you can see a little bit of a pickup in the dollar here. So a pickup in the dollar, people expecting, as I said, GDP to be underpinned. There's 1.9 to 2% of the uh, uh, expectations for 4Q16, although I think it was the Atlanta Fed. Uh, was the Atlanta Fed recently came out and their tracker for uh, for QTP was actually down to 1% at one stage. So these numbers will will just underpin the dollar slightly um, and will should just be pushing ahead. Um, I can't see it stopping, obviously, the ongoing conversations with uh, that Donald Trump and his uh, trade advisors are going to have. These will be going on, uh, ongoing, and, and especially for currencies like the Canadian dollar and the Mexican peso, these will probably be more or far more important than any sort of economic uh, data or data releases uh, out from uh, either domestically or internationally. Um, as I said, there, there's there's still still quite somewhere to go on that, and it doesn't look like that's going to be it's going to be something that's going to be decided in the next few months anyhow. Um, but all we can really say about today's res uh, Day's number. So let's have a look. See if we can go into that census and see if there's anything in there that uh, that can give us any 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 more. Uh, exports 126.8. Imports 191.6. So imports 4.2 billion less than January. Exports just a fraction less. So basically, it looks like uh, cutting back on imports more than uh, people, uh, the US buy more uh, imports. Yeah, so imports are cut back. So people in the US are buying less imports, while exports were running roughly the same rate. So that's, that's probably the way that the government wants it to go. Right, okay, just another quick look here. Yeah, the dollar index, as I said, it's still it's trying to push ahead, but it's going to need more than this to really start to regain back here. As you can see, this is quite a sharp fall that we've had. Um, if you actually take it to a daily basis, it, it looks a lot more. It's a lot, see from here, look at all, you know, you've got all these red candles coming all the way down here. That's, that's quite a bearish move. Um, 
maybe we can start to see some support around here. Then there's obviously the psychological level of 100 people still use that these days. Okay, so we've got that, we've got that, we've got that there. Uh, one quick last look at the Mexican peso. Yeah, so we're not really doing a great deal. We've, we've had a, the dollar's had the uptick, moved up here, back to the top of this um, down downsized candle. Yeah, so that's that, that's really about that actually. Um, what I could just do is I'm just going to point you towards, if we go into the um, Daily FX uh, website, um, and if you have a look at the webinar calendar here, um, we as a company do a very wide range of uh, different webinars, um, everything from live data coverage, as you can see, this is that one we're doing here. We're doing another one a bit later on, on US consumer confidence. Uh, Walker's then doing one on a um, strategy session on tools and tactics. But if you just look through here, we've there's lots of strategy sessions, there's lots of trading sessions, trading Q and A's. That's always a good one to get involved in. Masterclass building your trading strategy. So yeah, I mean, as I said, it might be worthwhile bookmarking the uh, Daily FX webinar calendar page. Uh, they're all free. Please come along and join us. So anyhow, um, I'm going to sign out now. My name's Nick Corley. Thank you for joining me. Um, I wish you the best for the rest of the day and good trading. Bye now.